Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're here with Tony from Lakeside Customs. Been looking forward to this one. My buddy Ken Johnson from Classics Daily and at Ken. Ken set this one up for us and here's the things I know about it. 55 and I know it's all themed around Evil Knievel and like we were right. talking about, I love it because I grew up watching him jump. What prompted you first off to do the Evil Knievel theming on this? First off, I've been an Evil Knievel fan uh, since a kid, just like okay. a lot of the old school guys. My kid kind of dared me into, then do it Evil Knievel then. So I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of started off on a dare. Super this is cool. what we ended up with. Let's pop the hood. <laughs> wow. I noticed the cane, so that's like Evil's cane, Correct. right? Yes. Wow, dude, this is so bonkers. What, was it a clean 55? Was it a wreck of a 55? What it's a gentleman that I spoke to for the first time yesterday, his name is Ronald. He owned the car for 25 years. He started off with a hope and a dream and, and did some design work on the car and, okay. and they had to stop because of some medical issues. And, okay. and then we were able to uh, okay. grab it. And mm -hmm. We pulled it all apart and kind of re-engineered a lot of it and mm -hmm. uh, finished it to what you see here today. Gotcha. How long has it been done for? Probably like a week. A week? We almost made it to the uh, the Good Guy show. We had a faulty uh, computer system. Kind of kept us uh, from our where we wanted to debut it. Robbie Knievel was scheduled to come down to Good Guys, and then he uh, struck ill as well and passed away since then. So, yep, yep. Um, so everything kind of fell apart a little bit for our debut. But gotcha. uh, yeah, we're just kind of rolling it out now. What are we looking at here? What did, what have you done engine wise? This is a huh? 712 cubic inch Merlin block. It has the uh, dark big chief heads and has uh, the Kinsler uh, fuel injection system on it. So that's what, like 12 liters? Or uh, yes, like it's that? real close to that. It's right at about 1,096 horsepower. Is Without it? the nitrous, we actually removed the we nitrous uh, <laughs> from the uh, from the engine because we didn't want all, all the problems to go with that. So um, you go over 700 cubic inches, and then your plan is to throw nitrous out at all. Yeah, that was the original plan, and then uh, we kind of pulled back from that a little bit. Everything is a little bit limited on space, and uh, yeah, and we wanted to kind of keep it as clean as we could under the hood. I mean, obviously, it's ridiculously impressive the engine, the size. I mean, the headers are massive. Everything's insane. But then on top of it, the metal work in here is exceptionally Correct. clean, dude. And really pushed quite a way back, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's pushed about uh, four and a half inches. God, even the way you cut out the hood so the, you're getting the clearance there. Yeah, that took intake. us about five times to get the clearance right on those trumpets and about three paint jobs on the trumpets to, to really get it to fit. And it, it, yeah. it clears by about a sixteenth of an inch. This is just stunning, stunning. I'm, dude. How big are the headers on this Headers thing? are two and a quarter inches. Yeah. And then what does it go to exhaust wise? Three inches. Uh, we have a three inch stainless uh, from front to back. And we yeah. designed all the exhaust system. It has a, like a Borla uh, muffler set up, that, uh, a really small muffler, so it, it airs gotcha. it out pretty well. <laughs> we opted to go with no air filters and the injection system gives a little bit more of a throaty sound. Look, let's be honest, the red, white, and blue theme with the gold, with the white, like this is the kind of stuff, personal opinion, not done in a tasteful manner. It quick, can yeah. really get ugly in yeah. a quick second. And this is, for me personally, it's just truly beautiful what you guys have done. Thank you. And you guys build all this in-house? Yes, we have a painter the, uh, that works for us. So really, uh, besides when it leads to the paint shop, that's the only time it's actually out of our facility. So I have an uh, interior guy that comes and he visits our shop and he does everything right there. The glass shop, he comes and does his thing there. and uh, But all there. the metal work you guys yes, are doing yes. in house. Yes, we took care of all the metal work. Uh, it's chopped two and a quarter inches in the front, so to get that windshield to fit, it took uh, three tries to uh, oh my to gosh. get that. Oh my gosh, yeah. I get what we're doing here, well over a thousand horsepower without the nitrous, as you said. What does it mate to transmission-wise, rear end? It, it's a TCI Turbo 400, and it has a gear vendor uh, set up behind that as Got well. It. And then it goes to the Kugel independent rear suspension with a strange Ford nine inch. And then he has the Kugel uh, front components as well. So yes, yeah. and with the Art Morrison chassis. Yeah. So the whole thing's sitting on a Morrison chassis Correct. and then all the suspension components are Kugel. Correct. Wow, yeah. there's a couple of serious yeah. hitters right there, dude. See, you really didn't pull any expenses on this one. No expense spared, <laughs> just like anything, right? It's quality. 
Look, in a 500 horsepower car, I think it's really important that everything go quality. You know, you start getting up into this kind of power range. I mean, you know, brother, things can go wrong sure. in a quick second, man. Because there's only a small amount of the radiator yep. exposed. Does it all? Yeah, it all the radiator, tucks in yes. The radiator uh, is actually up in here, and then we have the cooling fans actually recessed in, and they clear by about an eighth of an inch on the radiator. We had a custom radiator built for the front of it. Unbelievably clean work. I mean, not a wire exposed anywhere. Yeah, it's, that's not an easy one to pull. Yes, I'm a kind of fanatic about uh, the, the finished work. So wiring is, uh, is, a, oh, is a big thorn on my side. Is it a manual brake setup? It's actually, a it has the Kugel with the vacuum uh, booster underneath the dash and it has all Willwood brakes uh, all around it. So mm -hmm. six piston in the front. Mm -hmm. What's your wheel and tire setup on The this? wheel and tire, they're uh, 19 inches in the front and they're a Budnick wheel and uh -huh. they're 20 inches in the back. What size are you doing tires on here? These are a Hoosier, like a uh, intermediate slick type of setup uh, that we're actually trying out. We started with uh, three different size tires and this is kind of what we ended up with, thinking that we wanted the, the larger of the of the group. And uh, big chunk once we well, there. once we set it down, it's it clears like about an eighth of an inch. So curious on how when we uh, do finally get it up to speed. You are on air, right? Correct. Air ride system. It's uh, by Ride Tech. It has actually dual bags at each of the uh, the rear corners and singles in the front. Is it their shockwave where you're always on the coil? Correct. All the way around. It's so, it, like, I'm not a big bag guy, you know, it, just because I've ridden in a bunch of airbag cars where you're sitting on the bag and, you know, the it, bouncy yeah, and stuff. Tough. Yes. This setup that they do is just bitching. I, I absolutely love it. Man, I love, too, that you went side exit exhaust on this. Yeah. We have a little bit of staining up in here, so uh, just a <laughs> it's a little caramel color, so it don't burn the paint, but that's kind of where we set out to, to have yeah, it. Yeah, uh, really slick, man. So the, the back end of the body, the, the quarters, have actually been flared by an inch and a half on either side, uh, so it uh, still is in possession of all the original uh, wheel tubs in the, in the inside, so all the stock. Really? The tire is actually flared to the outside by an inch ah, and a half. Ah, gotcha, man. The amount of metal work, I mean, and I don't even know if 55 that well, and I can tell it's dramatic. I mean, even this, I don't remember seeing any 55s. And, no, and actually, that. this is one of the items that Ronald was able to uh, take care of before we took possession. So it's almost like a mystery of uh, the way that the hood was uh, manufactured. So I wish I could take credit for that, but uh, that did come to us as a gift. Yeah, gotcha. Obviously, your bumpers are radically flushed. The bumpers in. are, yep, flipped, and uh, they're, they're pretty fitted. All the hardware fitted, uh, gone from yep, them. Pretty, yeah, fitted pretty tight. I'll say. Uh, the front and the back. There's no flaring in front of the body, no, correct? No, that's all a stock uh, style fender. And then you said, how much is the roof chopped down? Uh, two and a quarter inches. At front, how about the back? The back is still the stock style uh, rear, uh, rear window, and it's actually been sloped to the, to the front. So it's all one piece uh, side windows. But there's a second window here. Correct. Yeah, got it, got it. We've so you lose the win-win. Correct, so we actually uh, uh, removed the frame uh, at the back as well. They usually have the frame with the little flap that folds in Correct. and out, right? Yes. Yeah. This is all changed, is it not? Correct. All the A-pillar, and then we actually had to redesign all this to fit the uh, windshield after the first try. It's a uh, work in progress uh, at this point. Yeah, Dude, we had to redesign. The shopping is like, Pretty damn on point. Uh, yes. <laughs> White car, man, the gapping is gonna show hard, Correct. dude. What'd you get your door handles from? These are a Corvette door handle. Ah, okay. Yeah. So is this glass altered as well? Uh, no, this is actually the factory it size is. glass, yes. We opted to go with the clear uh -huh. glass uh, all the way around the car so you can view the interior a little bit more clear. See how I matched my shoes to the interior today? Oh yeah, that's right. Now, is the trunk still stock? The, the trunk is completely stock. Completely, it's really one of the only things on the car that, that remains stock. I guess it just looks so different because there's no hardware exposed Correct. anywhere. So what's that, with a solenoid or something? Correct. And then I'm guessing, do you have a mechanical release as well? No, uh, we went suicide on that. So we it. do have an exterior uh, uh, plug with a uh, remote battery charger on board so we God make forbid. sure that yeah that yep. we don't have a uh, that type of a problem and all your trim pieces for one what's the color and is that cerakote is it uh, this is a cerakote and it this is. is a custom color that uh that cerakote uh did for us here and we actually incorporated the color inside the stripe on the side 
It's cool though how it ties it all together with your exhaust, with your headers, with your wheels, with your trim pieces. It's We're trying to build something a little bit different that people don't see every day because usually the traditional 55 Chevys, uh, you know, uh, kind of blend uh, together and I love them all, but. They have a tendency to keep us, uh, for the most part, a certain bit of theme to them right. and you've definitely departed radically from that with this car, you know. What is the white color that? Omar White and Omar Blue, and that's the name of the gentleman that had to provide me with 30 different samples of the white and 30 di different samples of the blue. I about drove him crazy, so I said, you know what, we're gonna call, we're gonna call this Omar White and Omar Blue for you. I love it, man, uh, that's so, yeah, rad. We, we really taxed him on the uh, color choices here, and uh, it had to be the right color. Okay to climb in? Absolutely. Oh my God, dude, this interior is, personal opinion, this is the most over the top element of the car because it's not blue, it's all blue. I mean, it's blue, blue, blue. Yeah, there were about uh, 28 cows that were sacrificed to uh, pull this off, <laughs> including the headliner. Uh, if you look up at the headliner, yeah, we did. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, oh my <laughs> God, dude, the amount of blue and red. Oh, this is so bitching. We actually incorporated uh, the Evil Can Evil handlebar into the interior here. That's what that replicates, yeah. huh? A little subtle hint. Is it so full custom center console? Correct, it's all, it's all steel. It has the autometer 6021 uh, dash. This is just decorative, there's no gauge here? Uh, no, no gauges on either side. We switched this one up over here to resemble a uh, kind of a fallen flag uh, type of design. Where a lot of people say, oh, the stars are upside down, but we actually did that intentionally. All the tri so is that all custom trim pieces? Correct, it's made all across? stainless steel bars. What are the seats from? The seats are from a, a Lexus a <laughs> GS460, I believe. <laughs> and they're, uh, yeah. They're, kind of built up yeah, a little we bit. Took, to we took the, uh, the heating element out of them, but they are double uh, adjustable. Power. Are they still powered? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> I know there's a story that comes with these Evil Knievel number one inserts here. So why don't you tell yep, how uh, you came uh, to have uh, them? You know what? I, uh, I bought actually one uh, a few years back with intentions of doing it on a bicycle seat. And then I was like, uh, you know what, I think I'm gonna incorporate these into this car here. So I mm -hmm. ended up finding somebody out of Europe uh, that had all this certificate of authenticities. And I actually bought uh, three additional patches, two for the truck that we're building uh, to match this car. We're building a ramp truck and then uh, one for the other side here. So we actually sewed those in and those are uh, original hand-signed Evil Knievel patches from back in the day. I mean, my God, dude, just how cool is that? I designed all of the uh, the metalwork in there. We drew all the templates. We had everything uh, machined down. Went through about 40 processes to get all the uh, the center console, the dash bezels, and, and in the back here, this is actually a speaker port. We have uh, 7,000 watts of stereo system. <laughs> so this is actually a speaker port in the back for the subwoofers. You have 7,000 watts in this yes, thing? Yes. Uh, dude, you uh, go way over uh, the, yes, You don't uh, mess uh, around. You go all the way over the top with But stuff. we have no air conditioner or heater, so. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess if you blast the audio loud enough, you get yeah, airflow yeah, from that. Some of the right? friction, yep. <laughs> Possibly. Now, what are the rear seats from back here? The, these are all custom built and hand fabricated. And then tucked into the Correct. all the hardware. Yeah, these here. are, uh, it's about four inches thick in the back. This is original to the car? This is original to the car. But then where it it's, meets up here, correct. this is this all is custom. From made. here, here, this is all custom around the, uh, yeah. from the back to the back side. And then I noticed after you pointed this out, how you've brought it into the seat as well. Correct. And then this, uh, the armrest here, kind of resembles the armrests in the back. If you notice how they kind of flow back to me. I just caught <laughs> that. Wow, and even down here, it's still the same material, Correct. right? That's all suede, yep. That is such an extreme blue. Is it from something, or is it just, did you go through swatches uh, no, um, of material? No, I went through uh, about five different colors of, uh -huh. of the blue suede. We went through the process of matching the, the blue, uh, as far as the paint, to the suede interior. I mean, Elvis would have gone nuts for that, right? Oh, yeah. Is that your start button? Uh, no, this is actually a center console. Because I was sitting here wondering, like, well, where are all your buttons and switches and stuff? And you got everything tucked in here. Yeah. Uh, uh, so at some we, point you're going to finish it out to, to we, stay with the entire theme of the car. With the ECU, we had to kind of switch 
everything at the 12th hour to accommodate this uh, electrical system so this had to all change on the inside at the last minute but we have a full switch panel called a switch pros and uh, what are all the different switches these are all just temporary until the switch pros panel goes in here Got and it. we have a blue suede panel that resets. So is that controlling here. things like fan yes. and ignition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the ECU. And this, like I said, this is a temporary panel. I got you. Dude, I never mind seeing, just so you know, and I, and I know the way our viewers are. I mean, most of you guys are really great about it, is understanding what it takes to bring together a custom car. Bro, I think you and your guys have proved that you're far from lazy. I mean, the amount of workmanship in this car is... And we've been uh, simultaneously building a 66 C60 Evil Knievel themed ramp truck that this will sit on the back of. And uh, it should be done towards uh, September, October, but it's all through mock-up stage and we're getting ready to blow it apart to send it to the paint shop right now. So a big truck with a, like a 22 foot custom built bed <laughs> on the back and yeah, it's, and that has about 7,000 watts of stereo system in it as well. And of course yeah, it it's gonna be uh, pretty at, wild. At uh, this point, you better not ever show me a subtle <laughs> car and be like, what happened to Tony, man? Something's wrong with that boy. Boy, I tell you, dude, this is uh, every bit of mind-boggling as I was anticipating it would be. If you're cool with it, we'll uh, we'll get our cameras in here and we'll go take it out for a little Absolutely. cruise. You Let's know, take it for a ride. Yeah. This is gonna be fun, you guys. Off camera, when we talked about the rear end of this car, how when you look through the rear wheel, you don't see any brake. That's a, uh, a Kugel uh, independent rear suspension. But so the and brake is inset the, the on brake, the diff yep. itself. Uh, you have dual rotors with a Wilwood caliper. They are set uh, right on the inner side of the pumpkin. So not only do you get a high level of rear braking, but you also get the view where you get to see all the Correct. midget suspension. Correct. So you said before we drove, you've got a small handful of miles on there. Like you're really at the beginning of driving this, this car. Is, yeah, this is basically the shakedown process. By the way, you guys, another thing that was set off camera, I just got the cameras going here, is that although it's an automatic, it is a manual valve body. Any of you don't know what that means, it means he has to manually shift to go from first to second to third and back down. Is there a reason why you chose to do it that way? Uh, performance. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. We're still in the uh, the tuning process, just getting all the fluids right, getting all the shifting pattern right, getting all the little uh, bugs worked out. And you guys, just so you know, although this car makes over a thousand horsepower, we're going to experience very little of it today because because it is in the beginning stages of driving it. Right. There's, you know, any of you guys know it's. It's a process, man. You build it, you get it just right. Now you go drive it and work out the bugs and work out the bugs and work. And that can take 500 plus miles to find the bugs and work them out. Correct. I have a good pest control guy, so he's helping me work the, the bugs out. Yeah, right? Uh -huh. There's guys like me, right, that go out and drive and I don't do it as much anymore. But as a kid, I used to get after it a bunch. Go up in the canyons, you pretend like you're a race car driver. You're actually a race car driver. A former race car driver. Former, yes. I used to race all over the United States on the go-kart series. And then we moved over to um, a dirt track. So we traveled around quite a bit on the dirt track. And then we moved into the NASCAR series. The local tracks here, Irwindale Speedway, El Cajon. And then we uh, started traveling into the upper series of the Southwest Tour of the NASCAR. <laughs> and then we ended up in the Winston West series. And that's kind of where uh, my journey ended. Gotcha. Some pretty high levels of motorsports, Correct. dude. Yeah, a lot of work. I mean, you're talking highly competitive. You're inches off of people's bumpers and sides. and It's it, really similar to a building a car like this. You know, everything's uh, performance-based. You know, the clearances are all tight. You know, the, the engine, the rear end. Sitting in the passenger seat of this car, Feeling how it sits on the road, the Art Morrison, the Kugel, the Ride Tech. It's stable. Yeah, I mean, it really uh, feels like yeah, it. Yeah, it's super stable. By the way, these seats, you can sit in them all day long, huh, man? And we get to enjoy it together for the first time. Basically. Dude, I love it. <laughs> I just love it. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you guys willing to take the time to do this. 
and, it, and that's kind of a uh, like a performance mode of the bright height. Gotcha. I felt it stiffen up a bit. Yes. off to you and your guys man this is some hell of a build you put together I gotta say <laughs> yeah they put I a, get it, the tune there's they, still some tuning to yes, be done they put a little conservative tune on it sure. until I get back to to finalize everything sure the amount of work that goes into the build itself, but for me, it's all the stuff that comes after the build's done, now to get it to where you can turn the key or hit the start button and go for a drive, you know? Correct, it's a, it's a lot of fine tuning at the end. It's a big process, and I, th I got to imagine, the more radical you go, the more elements there are to deal with. Uh, what a crazy sound this car makes. It's like, yeah, that's not an LS, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> not today. That, my friends, is what I call a truly exceptional build. The theme of Evil Knievel, I absolutely love. Yes, it's a bit on the over-the-top side, but it's done in a tasteful manner, I think. I think they pulled the reins at the right points. Just exceptional. And then the mechanical components of this thing, from the Morrison chassis to the Kugel suspension, the Ride Tech shock wave, and that massive 700-plus cubic inch motor. Totally, totally blown away by this build. I know you guys enjoy it, but I hope you truly appreciate what it takes to build a car on this level and that Tony's got the balls to go drive this thing down the road. So as always, you guys, I say thank you for hanging and watching what we do here. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.